Hi there, Ome, and welcome back to the Hard Knock Sword Podcast, a Shadowrun 4th Edition actual play podcast. Jander on over here and take a listen to episode 30, in which the team takes a breath before heading back to collect their payday. Deandra, Ice, and Rigor Mortis finally find a hotel without baggage. Grace and Ollie go camping and contemplate communism. And Cecile has made an offer she can't refuse. As always, featuring Beth as Grace, a.k.a. Nightingale, and Val as Ollie, a.k.a. Boxer, Veronica as Cecile, a.k.a. College Girl, and Kat as Deandra. It's really whiz that you are joining us, and I hope you enjoy this episode. If you do, please tell your friends and leave us a positive review. We are available on most podcast services, YouTube, iTunes, etc., You can also find a link to our Discord server in the podcast description and on the YouTube channel. We would love to hear from you, and we share a lot of in-game pay data there as well, such as maps, intros, fluff, and character stories. Please do drop us some feedback. On other topics, the secretive guild of Shadowrun podcast and content creators that I may or may not be part of invites you cordially to check out the great pay data that is being created for you on the Matrix. Today's recommended trid is the What the Dice Show. Thank you for calling the Nier Tova Travel Agency where we make your travel dreams become travel realities. We're sorry, but all agents are currently with other callers. Your call and dreams are important to us. Please stay on the line and an agent will be with you in a moment. Near Tova Travel Agency, a subsidiary of Horizon Group. Is your family bored at home? Do you need something new or exciting to do? Well, look no further. Here at Prisma Gym City, you can experience it at all. Enjoy four major theme parks that is sure to satisfy everyone in the family. Or meet the hottest stars. You and your family can become renowned ladies and gentlemen of the town. Or become cowboys and mosey down the wild west streets of Copperwood. The wildest town in all the west. Come experience the feeling of the wind in your cape while riding the tallest, fastest, and most thrilling rides at Superhero Hideout Island. Have a little one that prefers to wave a wand and cast magic? Or a little fighter whose mighty sword will slay the dragon? Well then, Wizard's Cove is perfect for your little adventure. And make sure to visit Crystal Lagoon the largest water park in all of Evercrona. Cool off and drift down the endless, chill river. Now if theme parks aren't your jive, well then don't worry, you can walk down the famous Path of Stars and have a chance to meet all your favorites. Or strut your stuff in one of their many recruiting studios. You could be the next discovered star and rest well at night knowing this city is owned and run by the Horizon Company. Prisma Gem City, where entertainment never ends. We are sorry, all agents are still busy. Please press 1 to leave a callback number. Your call number has been logged and an agent will contact you at their earliest convenience. Near to the travel agency, making your travel dreams become Travel realities. Goodbye. Thank you again, Jummers. Don't forget, watch your back, conserve your ammo, giraffes aren't real, and never ever make a deal with the dragon. All right, so you you and Ice are headed through the through the darkness of the Snohomish uh, downtown area, trying to make distance between yourself and the uh, Sheraton. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't think either me or Ice would end up, like, panting while running, so... Uh, I think d and would, like, without breaking stride, go... You know, if you knew you were gonna be in deep shit in Snohomish, you could have said something. He says, nah, well, I honestly didn't even think about it until all of this went down. It seems like so long ago, and 
just different people. I figured they would all be dead or have moved on with their life or gotten a life or grown up or whatever. That was what, 10, 20 years ago? That was 20 years ago. Damn, that feels like yesterday. Yeah, for you maybe. Yeah, I guess. I guess that's a little unfair. All right. Indra, make a... Just a roll straight edge, please. Gotta love rolling edge. It's the uh, Game Master version of flipping a coin. One. All right. Okay. So behind you, you hear motorcycle startup. That's a base gun. And it sounds like your motorcycle. Rigor Mortis got a pretty good roll on his pilot ground craft roll, and he also made a stealth check. So you guys pull up um, in the shadows of an alleyway in the general direction of where you told Rigor Mortis to meet you. Um, he doesn't have a calm, but you pretty soon you hear the, the, the bike coming down the road towards you. I think the um, is going to peek out of the alleyway and look, both, like, look both ways to see if anyone's on the street um, other than her bike, and then she's going to like wave at what she assumes is her bike. Yeah, street's relatively clear. There may be some light traffic. Snohomish is a relatively rural part of Seattle, of the Seattle Metroplex. And you see, looking back towards the shirt, you see your motorcycle come down the road. Uh, driving uh, fairly gracefully is the, the small guy, Rigor Mortis, that you guys rescued from the uh, Warehouse Alliance lockup. And he seems to have a pretty good handle on the bike, actually, although it does look relatively large on him. And he pulls smoothly to a stop next to you and pops down the kickstand and leans the bike over and gets off and says I'm, I mean there's not a kickstand on it there's a sidecar so it just stands ah, right. so he basically oh. just br- comes smoothly to a stop brakes turns the motorcycle off gets off and says uh, there you go that was easy good job sidecar okay he hops in that was fun too thanks good job it'll never happen again he, he chuckles we'll see never say never I wouldn't let Ice drive my bike I wouldn't let Ice drive your bike either where to now, if Snohomish isn't safe? Yeah, Snohomish didn't work out so well, so uh, I don't know. Where is we the... go back to, uh, let's not go through the barrens again, okay? We're not going to. I just wanted to get us off cams for a while. It worked, but um, I'm not expecting to do it again anytime soon. Where's the damn Seattle map? You're in Snohomish, so you're basically in the northern uh, province of Seattle. Bellevue is just below um, Snohomish, right? Yeah, like... you've got Everett to the north and Bellevue to the south. Which would be easier to, for us to get to? Uh, either of them would work out fine, but if you go to Everett, then if you want, when you head back to Tacoma to meet up with uh, to, with Procop, you have to go back through Snohomish. Yeah, that's a bad idea. Unless there's like ferries on the sound, but I, I doubt that. As in like boats that carry cars and motorcycles and stuff. Not as in like magical, not as in paracritters. I think d and would make a snap decision and head towards Bellevue. All right, Bellevue is the sort of the most upscale residential neighborhood of Seattle. Not that that's bad, I'm just, just pointing that out. Yeah, I understand. I'm just um, I'm trying to figure out if Deandre would know a place in Bellevue, or if... Why don't you just go downtown? I don't think that's a very good idea, because downtown seems like the, the best place to get picked up by a I think it's probably equal between Bellevue and downtown. You're going to be on camera most of the time. I think Deandre wants to get out of Snohomish. So whichever one is quicker, Bellevue or downtown, she's just going to get to those places. Bellevue is going to be quicker. So Bellevue it is. She wants to be out of firing range of that Snohomish. All right, you head south towards Bellevue, across the Sammamish River. You know, pretty soon you start entering more residential urban areas. Snohomish is relatively country. Quickly notice that you've entered Bellevue. Traffic increases and more residential neighborhoods. Are you going anywhere specifically in Bellevue, or are you just headed? I think d would end up in Bellevue, and as soon as she like feels like she's in the, far enough from Snohomish, she'd just pull to, into like a parking lot and start looking for a hotel. You quickly find a stuffer shack, pull over. Actually, d would probably see the stuffer shack and go in for like a foot out. She'd like get on, just, like, 
pull up and get off the bike without saying anything and then turn to ice and rigor mortis and go you guys want anything rigor mortis is yeah i'm I'll, let me come in i haven't been in one of these in 20 years i want to see what they've got i want some nerves keep the bike helmet, bike helmet on then oh yeah right good call i need i want some purple nerps and uh let me see he's already made he's sort of compiling you can see he's compiling like a list of Duffer Shack delicacies that he hasn't had in forever. And Ice just says, I'll, I'll keep a watch on the bike. Sounds good. Dinder, roll your edge again. We're testing the edge today. Edge, none, submit, submit, zero. All right, a night errant cruiser pulls in as you're entering the, uh, the Duffer Shack. A night errant cruiser pulls into the parking lot. And the, uh, looks like there's only uh, one officer driving gets out glances over at ice and then heads into the stuffer shack right behind you guys do i recognize the officer um hmm. let's say if you roll your roll edge plus your your knight errant knowledge versus the threshold of say four hits five hits call it four hits maybe you do Okay, so I'm just going to roll Knight Errant Knowledge and then Edge, and we'll see what comes up. How's that? Mm-hmm. Knight Errant, three, Edge, none, one, four. four hits. Yeah, you get a... You think you do know this this guy. Oh, well, I, I was never a Knight Errant member. I'm just friends with a lot of the Knight Errant members around Seattle. Um, yeah, so you've, you've interacted with him. How have you interacted with this guy? I think we've probably ended up at the same Suffer Shack a few times and that was back when like the first few times it was when I was like trying to go through the the, the corpse deck to find my brother and so I was interacting with them like constantly so I was getting names, talking to them trying to learn people's names so I could kind of wedge my way in there okay, um, that makes sense but eventually I think I've gone like darker and darker um, on the I'm yeah. talking to, uh, like, corpse people. Basically, just, as you've realized, you weren't getting anywhere. Yep. So, I, like, I, I take a glance at him, and then I, like, double-take, and I go, aren't you, officer? And I, like, take a guess at the officer's name. Aren't you, officer, uh... Winifred? Winifred? He looks startled for a minute, and then he looks over and says, uh, yeah. Uh, um... The injury, right? Yep. Oh, well, that's what they called me back on the force. Um, if I'm a civilian now, I guess I go by Thean. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, how did, uh, did you ever get any leads on your brother? Nah, I kind of went dark. I asked around some to my friends, you know, you guys, and, uh, didn't get much back. So, I'm just kind of, I've gotten close to giving up, I think. So. Yeah, tough luck, that. Um, didn't, I know we didn't find anything, nothing really actionable. Probably for the yeah. best, though, considering what, uh, you know, where that might have led, right? He gives you, he's giving you sort of the cop, you know, kind of, probably better not to get into trouble kind of thing. Yeah, that might be for the better. I don't know, these days. Sometimes I feel like if I, if my life had taken a turn a few years ago, I would have ended up in a way different place. You know how it is, right? Yeah, I see it every night. Since I've been sent to Bellevue, you know, I gotta admit, things have been a lot quieter. Which I can appreciate. Who's the uh, who's that funny character you're with? The one with the helmet on. You see, you look over and you see Rigor Mortis just sort of got a basket and he's like got it stuffed with nerps and you know thermonuclear burritos and stuff. That's my cousin Morty. He's been in uh, the Sailor Sheed for way too long. Yeah, he looks hungry. Yep. I Better just keep him away him from those thermonuclear uh, burritos. Those things will do some damage. Yeah, I'll try to convince him. He's been in a. Uh, Sorry. Good seeing you. Um, stay out of trouble, and, uh, yep, sorry we didn't find anything more out about your brother. As always, if you hear anything, let me know, okay? Sure thing. And I kind of, like, go back to browsing with, uh, the various canned soy calves they have. He's, he's grabbing himself a donut and some coffee. And, uh, Rigor Mortis comes up to you. He's got his basket full. He says, hey, uh, I just realized I don't have any money on me. Yeah, that ride from Snohomish, or that ride through Snohomish, taking all your junk, or all your uh, credits, and I kind of elbow him in the play-along way. And he's like, 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, I, what I meant to say is I don't have any red sticks. Yeah, Sailor Sheet did a number on you. I'll cover it this time. You'll have to owe me, Morty. Uh, yeah. I, I'll i owe you one. I do owe you one. Sounds like a plan. My good friend, uh, Officer Winifred over there, uh, said to stay away from Atomic Burritos, so maybe only one of them. Oh, yeah, that's probably smart. He, uh, shuffles off to, to drop some of the... He basically puts half the basket back away. Think of, think of rigor mortis as sort of like, if you look at the, uh, at his token picture, that's probably not a bad kind of representation of him. Sort of an older, older dude, skinny, um, pretty small. He's got a motorbike helmet on. Bob is ID. He's got a motorbike helmet on. He's got his, underneath the motorbike helmet, he's got the, the skull jammer on, the head jammer. So he's uh, so he doesn't blow up, which, on second thought, you're danger. You're probably quite happy that he's still got that motorcycle helmet on. Otherwise, that thing would be really visible. Yep. Somebody'd be like, "Why are you wearing a head jammer?" All right. So, uh, what else are you doing in the stuffer shack? I think uh, Dander would grab a couple soy caps and maybe a few like, like six or seven of the like whatever the equivalent of cup noodle is in the sixth world, and basically just kind of think about purchasing smokes for a little bit too long, perhaps, and then um, buy your stuff and head out. Alright, Ice is still sort of leaned up against the back of the bike, and uh, you don't know how tempting it is to start a firefight with some gangers here at the Stuffer Shack, but you guys just got out of one, so I'm not going to do that. Thanks. It's like classic Shadowrun trope, you know. If I was if I was really into it, we just we'd be rolling out the Halloweeners and going to town right here in the stuffer shack. Guns, grenades. Damn. I think um, D and Dare would spend a second just sitting on the bike looking for her uh, hotel. I guess. All right. So you're looking for a hotel in Seattle, in Bellevue. In uh, Bellevue or downtown, probably, because you can get to downtown from Bellevue, right? Yeah. Uh, there's a casino in. Bellevue that has a hotel, the classic. That's probably run by the mob. Probably. I feel like taking Shadowrunner business to organized crime, kind of uh, a no-go, especially after my run with the Yaks. All right, then there's the uh, the Bellevue Sleep and Eat on West Lake and uh, Sammamish Parkway, which is a sort of a cheap or inexpensive, let's call it, a less expensive coffin hotel. I think she'd end up looking like through the reviews on that one before she decided on it to see if there's any sketchy about um, it. Yeah, there are some rumors about it. Uh, you see, you read a review that by a guy called Lyrian who says, "If you ask me, the eat, the and eat portion of the name comes from the willingness of the Phantom Lakers to cooperate with the Taminus to arrange with people who won't be missed to disappear into chop shops for spare organs and ghoul meat." So that doesn't sound great. Not great, but... Um, what else is there? Well, there's the Bellevue Correctional Facility. Um, yeah, what a great hotel. <laughs> there's the Bellevue Hilton on 12th Avenue. Um, but this is sort of more of a luxury up-class place. Yeah. I think so, the it's testing our luck to go to the Coffin Hotel, the hotel, but I think it'd end up being better in the long term. Yeah, probably more... Anonymous. Yep. Ah, oh, wait a minute. There's the Greenwoods Inn on 116th Avenue. Ooh. It's uh, a little bit, it's sort of like the Hilton, but uh, not quite as fancy. So maybe that's another opportunity. Uh, I think she end up reading her reviews on that one, too, and kind of compared the two. Um, nothing, nothing major or weird jumps out at you about the Greenwoods Inn. That just seems to be sort of a middle line slightly upscale place with with a restaurant i think she'd end up deciding on the green the uh, greenview inn or whatever greenwoods. greenwoods inn yeah um it's kind of the middle ground between like anonymous and safe i guess so i think she'd head that way all right um yeah it's not a it's not a long drive it's about a half an hour from where you're at and uh without further incident you arrive at the uh what looks like a clean and well-run uh, hotel. Uh, 
fairly full parking lot. Um, quite different from the, uh, the Sheraton that you were at in Snohomish. This place is, looks like it's been well maintained. Um, the restaurant seems to be popular. Uh, you're definitely going to be not necessarily standing out like a sore thumb with the three of you, but also not necessarily blending in. Especially because of rigor mortis and his head jammer. Yeah, it's pretty centrally located in, in Bellevue, which is uh, which is nice too, because there's plenty of, you know, restaurants and stuff going on. You can sort of, you know, you're not, you're not, even though you're going to, not blend in with the crowd here. You're also there's enough traffic and there's enough people walking around that you're not going to be just standing out on the on the street. Dean Dare would end up here. I think she's stubborn enough that she decided on this already, so she's just power through. The other thing that Dean Dare probably likes is it's right next to to uh, Interstate 405. So you know if you if you did need to make a fast getaway, there's a there's an on ramp to 405 right there. I think she'd find like a secluded spot in the parking lot, not too far away from the main entrance. Ice looks at you and he says, all right, so attempt number two at a good night's sleep. You said it. I'm going to go in, tell him to chirp of cuckoo, and then I'll drag you out once. Uh, I'll drag you in once. I've got us a room. All right. We'll wait for you here. Rigor Mortis is busy chowing down on, on purple nerps. You're pretty sure that's not going to end well. She'll kind of mosey on into the the entrance and kind of into the lobby and the lobby is you know it's a nice hotel there are a couple of receptionists in the area and they wave you over and uh, ask you and the the gentleman asks you uh yes so do you have a reservation i do not it's kind of a last minute thing i'm sorry Oh, no worries. Let me uh, see what we've got. Is it just uh, for the for you yourself, or will me and my uh, two crazy cousins? They're uh, little two crazy cousins. Okay. Yep. And uh, Dean Dare does the like finger loop thing on the side of her head. Cuckoo, you could say. Um, your crazy cousins don't have any special requirements, do they? No. They don't require any accommodations. Okay. That will make things easier. Um, and how long will you be staying with us, Miss? Uh, Calve. Yes. How, so how long will you be staying with us, Miss Calve? Mm, probably a week at the most. Let's call it he a totally week. totally butchers the name, but you can see he's trying. Oh, I'm going to play with this kid. Did you just say a, a, a week? Yes. Okay. Okay. We do have a, uh, a room free for you. If you would like to uh, give me your cred stick and make the deposit. I think she just like hands it over. All right. He slots the cred stick and waits for a moment, then hands it back to you. Okay. You are registered in room number 27. Um, how many keys will you be needing? Two. Okay. He gives you two key cards. And he says it, the elevator is right over there, and uh, the restaurant is open until uh, 1 a.m. And you can order from the kitchen 24/7. Thank you very much. And she'd she'd pick out instead of like saying thank you, she'd pick out a very difficult thing to say in Sparathiel that this kid 100% wouldn't know the syllables for. She's just being me at this point. You can see his face like twisting and screwing up as he's tries to, as he's following along in his mind, and he starts to try to m say what you said, and then he sort of stutters to halt and says, uh, "Yes, good evening. Enjoy your stay with us." Um, and then she, I think she should probably just walks off after that. Um, she comes out to, uh, uh, I guess, ice and. Ice and Rigor Morris are still sitting there. Um, I think Ice has at this point reached over and grabbed a couple of nerps from, from Rigor Mortis. It seems like the uh, the bad blood or animosity between the two has maybe not completely disappeared, but it's, you know, it's uh, been subdued in, in the necessity of, you know, at least surviving together for the moment. I think the Dare would very loudly kind of go up to the four of them and go, Ivan, Morty, now... We have to stay here for a few days before the family reunion. 
so you better be on your best behavior and like uh not trying to attract attention but like make sure that any attention sh it's like oh this is an uh like an older person dealing with younger people kind of right way. uh ice looks around did, did you guys have any did you still have your bag with you did you have any bag it, i had a duffel bag but i'm assuming that i grabbed it on the way out because it's just like a duffel yeah, so that's strapped to the back of the bike. Bike, so Ice grabs it, and then he grabs Rigor Morris and basically lifts him up out of the uh, the sidecar and says, "All right, Morty, let's uh, let's go. Follow Sis." It's cousin. Cousin. <laughs> and uh, tech. Dean Dare locks up her bike and heads on in. Kind of gives a a basic wave, like a polite thing to the people at the front desk, and like motions towards the two of them and walks and towards the elevators. You can see the, the clerk who would help you out watching you, and you can see him looking at Ice and Morty sort of assessing and, and cataloging in his mind. You know, his imagination is sort of running away how crazy they might be. But other than that, you reach your your room on the uh, second floor, and it's, uh, it's a decent room, uh, not as big as the, the one at the Sheraton and Snohomish, but... A good bit cleaner and newer, more modern, so um, probably a win. And I guess at that point we'll leave uh, we'll leave Dean there to to getting a good night's sleep, and we will. Liz, your back is valid. Here. Okay, so maybe we'll go to Liz and Boxer who are camping on the east side of the uh, Metroplex towards the Snohom or towards the uh, Salishi border. Actually, I think they crossed the border, the Salishi border, and but are pretty close proximity to it in a location that they had camped before. Mm -hmm. um, I think the last time we, we left them, they had set up camp and eaten and we're going to, we're asleep in the tent. And uh, you wake up the next morning um, well rested and the, uh, the sounds of nature around you um, it stopped raining in the night and so Boxer when you get out you're, you're able to relight the uh, your campfire relatively easily and uh, it's just sort of a pleasant morning in the, in the forest uh, the sounds of nature all around you birds um, the dew it's a little bit chilly it's quite chilly still but it's not uh, not in a way that is unpleasant. You're actually feeling you actually feel relaxed and 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 well slept. Well slept. So what are you guys doing? How are you greeting the day? An excellent question. So what time is it? I assume it's the time they normally get up. So yeah. early, early o'clock. Pretty early. Mm. Hmm. I assume you guys are gonna make breakfast or and or at least heat up some uh, soy calf. Yeah, something like that. Food. Food. Yes, they're going to do some campfire cooking. Box has probably got quite a few MREs in her in her kit. Yeah, Boxer has the MREs. She's not eating them, though. She's she's doing some actual campfire cooking. Oh, well, right. more proper food. While she's doing that, I think that I want to pick through the flora here and just, well, one, see if there's anything of interest in particular, but also just note down some things, doing observations of the natural world, and of course helping box it where she needs it. Do, have you ever been camping? I mean, you went camping that one time with Boxer, but is camping something that Grace does? Grace lives out in the middle of nowhere, so yes, she does. Maybe not quite camping, but she is in nature quite a bit. Where's Pines again? Pines is uh, over the border, away from Seattle, um, very remote, but like still a reasonable distance away from Seattle that you can drive there within two, three hours. Okay. So if I remember right, she was actually, if I remember right, wasn't Pines up by Snohomish somewhere? I never established where Pines was, like in terms of the cardinal directions. Okay. All right, so make a an edge test. Edge test. Oh no. Just roll your edge. Both of us. 
Nope, just Grace. One sec. He said Edge. Just Edge. Mm -hmm. Just Edge. Oh no. Nothing oh. bad's going on. It's just to see whether you find any cool shrooms to munch on. I have terrible Edge. <laughs> you do have terrible Edge. We get no shrooms? Wait, it didn't roll anything because I have wounds. Wouldn't those be gone because morning? Yes. Well. I don't care. It's just, it's stunned. It's all stunned. Yeah, so you're fully rested. Both of you are fully rested. Any stun <laughs> damage that you had has is, is gone away. Okay, here here it actually does. Oh, I got a hit. Right. There you go. Stick Perfect. a one. Yeah, so as you start nosing around the campsite, um, you're struck by how, you're struck by the dichotomy between your recent days in the Seattle Metroplex between... Tacoma and Puyallup and Auburn, you know, very industrial, noisy, smelly, um, highly polluted parts of Seattle that where very few natural things live. And, and when they do live there, they've often been twisted by either by by corrupt magic or pollutants to this area here where you know, the, the ground under your hooves is soft and resilient and green with moss and smells clean and the water is clean. You smell the smell of pines around you and fresh water. And as you're sort of nosing around, you come across a small colony of frogs um, that are sitting in the moss uh, facing a small stream that's flowing next to the place that you're, you stayed these, these frogs are sort of a orange color. They're very small. They're orange with black spots on them. Their feet are, are black and their eyes are black. And they're just sort of sitting there, seem to be enjoying the, uh, the breaking of the morning um, and the, the dew that's collected. And every now and then one of them will, there's either a small grub or worm that's crawling around in the moss. One of them will eat that. Um, <laughs> it's uh, just... You know, something you haven't seen before, and it, the, the, the dichotomy between that and downtown Seattle, I think, just strikes grace. Something, you know, the, the contrast between the, the disharmony of, of the Metroplex and the harmony of nature out here. I mean, um, how long has she been stuck in Seattle at this point? It's been about a week. My god. When she realizes that she's probably, like, actually unironically just starts crying. Like... Like snotty nosed crying. Boxer, uh, as you're cooking up breakfast, you suddenly you suddenly hear a sound, and you look over and you realize that your companion has started ugly crying. Not quite ugly crying, right? It's not quite ugly crying, but she's making noise, and she's just kind of like she's on her haunches, just staring at the frogs. Her uh, mm -hmm. her grim wire, which she had been writing notes into, now just sitting open backed on the. Uh, on the bank of whatever water, body of water they're on or near. He hesitates this washing for a moment before she uh, looks away back at the food that's, well, now just sitting. Um, mm -hmm, beside the campfire. Now I'll finish. Mm -hmm. She thinks for a moment, a long moment, before stepping over, walking over. Grace. Oh. <laughs> sniffles, and she looks over her withers up to Boxer. Are you... Yeah. are you alright? I think so. I just... it was... Seattle. Seattle. <laughs> I, I hadn't been stuck in Seattle for that long the entire time I've been here. <laughs> I got a lot of... a lot of breaks. A week there, I kind of forgot what's normal. Uh, normal. He, yeah. he looks at the frogs. They probably actually ran away when she started walking over. Because she, uh... Well, animals just don't like her. <laughs> I don't understand why metahumans done what they've done to their world. She sits down next to her. We... You see all of this, right? You understand Not... that it's beautiful after fashion. <laughs> but before we built our own habitat, our cities. This world that you see was... Mm, our world isn't like yours. Yours is friendlier to living things. And ours 
you make your life here, you don't get to have it. Those cities, as cruel as they can be, are the kind of alternative to what would happen if we were to live out here. It's a different world, but uh, I understand. She leans and no, she takes Grace gently on her opposite shoulder and brings her in a little to her, to hold her. <sighs> he says, she stopped crying at that point and she leans in on the boxer. It was, um, I had a moment like this, I remember. Uh, I was deployed in, hmm? have you read about Africa? Only light reading. I know things are even worse there. Yeah. Well, I remember when uh, we had a long deployment. And in that interim period, between the two of them, I remember coming back home and just kind of being shocked by, I don't know, not having to be as vigilant. I still was, of course, because you can't just, we can't just get rid of that feeling, but... I had a month, and then that month I still didn't get used to it. But I did, hmm? But I, I was still struck by everything. I got weird looks, but, you know, it, it's different. In a way that, I don't know, I don't know what to describe. So it's okay. She, uh, rubbed her hand on her, huh? Would it be a shoulder? You had a word for it. Weather. Weather. Or withers. On her wither. And here for you. I understand. Kind of. If you want to talk about Equestria, or pains, or just need something, I'm here. Well, I... well... He looks back at where the frogs had been. I just think There were a couple that... there. Only a few jumped into the into the stream, and a couple burrowed into the moss, but there are still two or three that are still sitting there patiently. Brave frogs. They have no concern for the magically unsettling. I... I think that that's not fully true about this world being just different. I... I mean, of course, it, it is, but places like Seattle, there have to be... There must be some better alternative. There is. I had the, uh... What was it called? Communist. I knew. Crazy bastard. I had the strangest ideas. They sounded nice. I don't know. Maybe they could work in another world. It could be better. Maybe one day someone will make it like that. But until until something big happens, changes, we just have to be content with doing our little parts. That's what I do. That's what you can do. It isn't all a life of crime. We have to live with ourselves somehow. Some people do that by spending absurd amount of money on Three volatiles. You, maybe you could spend what you make on enjoying or preserving this bit of. She looks at her, the uh, vibrant forest. This bit of wild. Maybe you could have that be your purpose. She shrugs. I don't know. It's all your life to live. I'm here for you. Grace nods her head, and then she grabs up her, uh, token wire, and with her pen and her magic, it goes to the page, and then she looks at you, know, I mean, the boxer, you know, pulling away slightly. What'd you call uh, the guy you mentioned? What guy? A communist? I've, I've heard that before, but I thought it just referred to vaguely people from the East. <laughs> oh. <laughs> where, where did you hear that from? Because <laughs> they they call Russians and Chinese communists. Oh, ah. oh. Who did you hear that from? Um, mainly Jake, but I've heard it elsewhere. Yeah, that tracks. Jake's the racist one, right? I guess. Oh. They aren't... Oh. I don't have the knowledge to explain <laughs> global politics to you, but... Suffice it to say that he's not quite on the money, so to speak. <sighs> Look, I can help you figure out how to search it up, but I need you to promise that you aren't going to go absolutely crazy getting into some rabbit hole that ends with you bombing, I don't know, some corporate headquarters. Oh, the reason why I'm curious is because I didn't know 
that there were metahumans. Well, that's not fair. I suppose I didn't understand that there were metahumans who wanted everything to change, but I hadn't quite conceived of. Well, I don't. I don't really know. Most people just are, are blissfully unaware that things can be different. I'm. I'm curious. I. That's. That's all. I'm not going to adopt some metahuman doctrine. I'm. I'm an equestrian, first mm. and foremost, and I have my own values. But, I mean, if there are people who have lived in this world their entire life, and they have issues they see in it, maybe... Maybe their, their recognition of them and their proposed solutions would have some merit. I'll look at them with you, okay? Okay. <laughs> maybe we can get you into some fancy college course. Who has the money for it? <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, sadly flips through her Grimwire's pages. I really, really need to figure out the, 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 the metahuman form spell. Oh, oh, that's something to do. That's something to do. And she's suddenly out of Boxer's arms, oh. trotting back off to the camp. <laughs> she looks back to the frogs. At least some of you are brave. She trots off after the horse. All right. We're going to break to Cecile. Mm -hmm. Cecile was had checked herself in to... What was the place called? Oh, was it Cozy something? Yeah, the Cozy... The Comfy Cubicle. The Lakewood Comfy Cubicle. Yes. A clean, low-priced accommodation place for visitors on a tight budget. Cubicle security is recently upgraded and wireless network installed. I believe she was sleeping, other than being interrupted by uh, Deandra. Deandra's calling for recommendations on a place to stay in Snohomish. Mm-hmm. Is, yeah. She's probably up at about 5 a.m. So you're up and about. Um, are you staying in your cube for the moment, or are you headed out at 5 a.m. to look for coffee or whatever? No, she's just uh, reading a book. She's probably checking up with uh, that research paper Ice was involved with. Having a nice little... Uh, she might have gotten some fake tea from whatever services they have at the comfy cubicle. Yeah, they have some... Say, they have some uh, some vending style machines that dispense all manner of uh, beverages and food items. Yeah, she'll probably just spend two hours relaxing, taking a long shower taking care of herself, and then she'll probably head to uh, Samovar at around 7 or 8 a.m. All right, before you, before you have a chance to leave for the Samu, uh, you, uh, there is a knock on the door of the cube, of the cubicle. Mm. Is there any way for me to look outside before she opens the door? Uh, yes, you have, there is a, you can basically go into AR and their each cube has a, a camera so there's no like analog eye sure. peephole there's just a you go into AR or you use your, your comm link and you check out the camera in front of your door and standing in front of your door is a familiar figure a, a slight woman of Asian descent who you know um, the one who's been hunting you Wait. Um, does she appear alone? Yes, she is standing there in her usual pristine and fashionable um, business wear. Um, the seal does not open the door immediately. Um, her she hands are visible. Her... She's basically standing there with her hands, not necessarily, she's not making a show of keeping her hands visible, but Alice has got her hands just sort of at her sides and clearly mm. visible. And there's a, there's a wry smile on her face. Feel is looking for a way out of this um, room. That's there not. There is the front not door. a way out. Though. The only way out is the door. Great. Okay. The comfy cubicle is named cubicle for a reason. Seal's gonna go ahead. Uh, is she dressed? First of all, what time is this? Ah, uh, yes. It was towards the time when you were basically thinking you needed to start hire, calling a a uh, a grid guide cab or whatever. Mm -hmm. Cecile's gonna go ahead and open the door very cautiously. Alice is still standing there. She makes no move towards you, and she's still smiling. She says, 
Good morning, Cecile. Good morning, Mr. Reese. I uh, can only assume your intentions. My intentions are simple. I have a... My reporting structure has changed within the company. Oh, I see. And the person that I report to would like to have a word with you in private. Oh, does this benefactor have a name? Of course they have a name. However, I will allow them to divulge that as they see fit. However, I will assure you that you are not in any immediate danger, nor do I, or nor my employer intend you harm at this time. Whatever the case, I think I shall follow you. Well, I'm glad to see that you are reasonable and understand that the unpleasantness that occurred between us previously was of a professional nature and not personal and understand that at times in our world, these affiliations and needs change. I will not begrudge you the kidnapping, but you should seriously reconsider your use of those uh, probing spells, perhaps. She gives uh, DeVries a very stern look. Yes. Well, she looks at you speculatively and says, well, here's the thing, Cecile. While the mind probe may be unethical, it is far less damaging than physical attempts at coercing information from you. Mm. And those were my two choices. Be that as it may, please guide me to this, uh, your new manager. Ha, manager, she says. And as you uh, basically get down through the lobby of the comfy cubicle and out into the parking area, you see a white limousine parked. It has the livery of the Evo Corporation on it. And uh, the ride basically opens back door and stands next to it and motions for you to enter. You wouldn't be so bold as to use the same limousine, would you? No, this is a different limousine. It's a... Uh, far more luxurious and large variant. Mm. Seal steps in. Okay. The ride closes the door behind you without entering. You find yourself alone in the back of a very opulently appointed limousine. It's opulent, however very tasteful and clean in its aesthetic in keeping with Evo's corporate image. Um... As I said, you're alone in the back of the limousine. The lights are relatively dim. And after you settle in, you see a, a trio screen, actually a very fancy um, hologram projector, words to life. And a image is projected in 3D facing you of a middle-aged woman behind a desk, a large, wooden desk, natural wooden desk, which you can only assume is exorbitantly expensive. And behind her, you see views of Puget Sound. Um, you immediately recognize the woman. Um, she is uh, Mary Luce, the um, the CEO of Evo North America. Uh -huh. And she is, her expression is neutral. And as the, the hologram sharpens and firms up, you can see that she is steadying you. Um, Eel instinctively does her best at a bow in these tight quarters. Yeah, which you would achieve relatively well since it is spacious and the seats are, you know, they're not the kind of opulent plumpness where you sink into it and you have trouble getting out of. So you bow and you are, the bow is returned with a slight nod of her, of Mary Luce's head. And she says, Cecile, I presume you know who I am. Of course. What can I do for you today? It seems you had a very promise, have had a very promising uh, start at our university facility. So I have been told. Have you enjoyed your time with the university? It is lovely. I can't think of any better university to attend. I see. Your colleagues speak rather have rather mixed reviews of you. Oh, they that appear is to feel that you that they cannot trust you mm. for some reason. Trust is hard won these days. I think the world would be much better if we trusted more openly. Do you now? Of course. She smiles 
Well, it has come to my attention that through... She smiles. Through no fault of your own, you've come into possession of some information, a relic of pre-crash 2.0 days that pertains to myself and uh, Evo Corporation, or Yamatetsu, as we used to be known. Of course, I have been uh, faithfully guarding it until I could return it to you. I see. Very well. And I hear also, um, through no small risk to yourself. It was harrowing, but I. it turns out I am well suited for the task. Indeed. Well, let's be frank. I am very interested in acquiring the sole copy of this information. This, what is it called? A data that you have acquired. Mm, of course, I cannot personally offer any guarantee that it is the only copy, but I am aware of no other copies of it. Well, as you said, the world may be a better place if we trusted more unconditionally. And I'm inclined to trust you in this case. I don't think that holding on to a copy of this information would be beneficial, shall we say, to anyone. I have no use for such things. May I ask, have you read at it? the report? Yes. Of course not. Privacy is my uh, utmost priority. And have you been approached by anyone else in within Evo, aside from aside from um, Kirill Petra, mm. the dean? Oh, I can't say that I have been. There do seem to be other people that are aware of it, however. Yes, it relates to a rather messy period in Yamatetsu's uh, corporate political time, shall we say. Indeed. It would be so much better if we could put such times behind us. I think that if you return this data to me, we can put those times behind us. Ah, yes, of course. I myself would also like to put um, my current troubled times behind me to a new future. Indeed. I Do imagine I then... that that can be rectified. Your sin has been changed to the sin of a deceased individual. I think that status can be cleared relatively easy, and we can do some hand-waving, explain that you were on perhaps doing some covert, not covert, but working at a secret lab where we preferred to have you at least appear to the public as no longer being amongst the living. But we can probably revert that. So then, shall I deliver this to you, or do you simply want this data destroyed? No, I would like to retain a copy for personal sake. Of course. I understand entirely. Very well. Do you have it on you? I do indeed. Then I would appreciate it if you would give it to Alice de Vry. What I'm thinking here. Ah, but perhaps Mr. Vry's isn't the most um, trustworthy of agents in this case. Mary Luce chuckles somewhat mirthlessly and says, I can understand why you would feel that way. Ah, I don't mean to, um, besmirch her reputation. I merely wish to suggest that this data seems important enough that it ought to be delivered in person. Perhaps. It's, now it's her turn to think things over. And then she says, no. Understand, I'm... Cecile, that Alice's actions, Mr. Vry's actions towards you were, were professional and guided by the strict sense of hierarchy that we engender. However, once she realized that the person who was guiding her was acting not in Evo's interest, but in their own selfish interests, she brought the matter to myself, therefore proving her true loyalty to Evo. Mm. Yes, of course. Uh, I simply mean that I am extremely cautious since I have heard heard rumors that a, a the leader of a different branch of Evo appears to be rather interested in this data as well. Well, you're actually in luck. This other person has not yet become aware of the existence of this data. Fortuitous. Would they have, your troubles would be far greater. They are a far less likely person to, shall we say, be as generous and certainly more, <laughs> more willing to hold 
onto even the slightest perceived slights. So, in as you have it, you have been lucky that Mr. That Dean Petrov has uh, not let them know of the existence of that. He did that, of course, it truly is from self-preservation. Um, his position had become untenable, and had this other party with an Evo found out of the existence of this data, of this report, Dean Petrov's position would have very rapidly deteriorated. I see, and he shall be uh, removed from his position as Dean, I assume. Ah, yes. On to the next part of our business. Um, you can, if you would like, first of all, you can allay your suspicions and concerns about the safety of the data. There is a small uh, safe within the limousine which I can have unlocked for you so that you can place the, the pay data in it and then have it locked again. Of course. So, on to our next bit of business. Um, I am perfectly happy, of course, to renew your sin and revoke all harmful tags that might have been accrued to it in, you know, in exchange for this pay data. However, I do have a bit of unfinished business with Dean Petrov, as you can imagine. And since you have shown yourself so adept at maneuvering within the shadows, I would like to employ you and utilize you as a loyal Evo employee to, um, to give me a reason and excuse not related to the subject that we are talking about for removing him. I'm not sure I understand. You think my talents are best used, what, committing crimes for Evo? Crimes is an interesting way of putting it. Ultimately, we have our own set of laws outside of the jurisdiction of Seattle's or the UCAS. And as the CEO of, C of Evo North America, I have great leeway in what tasks I assign you. Of course. My apologies. I'm accustomed to UCAS laws. Yes, I understand. But they do not apply in this case. And even if they did, uh, they are they are subordinate to our own laws and the needs of the corporation. Um, how this conversation is uh, happening, I, I would like Cecile to be running a data search on her own comm link for this file. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just tell me no, if she ever finds it. Yeah, she she finds it. I'm, I would say I don't think we need to do any roles here since... It's Cecile's comlink, and I would, the way I see it, Cecile probably knows her comlink as well, you know, down to the the smallest bit of data on it. Of course. So um, a, a quick search of it would probably immediately lead her to a data block on on the uh, the comlink that she does not recognize. Yeah, um, I'm just going to copy that to anything she can that wouldn't be immediately obvious. Like, not just copying it on her comm link, but to, like, her um, technologically active like, clothes or something. Okay. It's a tiny file. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Let's say she put it in her shoes. Okay. Uh, where was the conversation before this? Uh, you, um, Mary Luce had basically laid out to you to the fact that Evo's concerns trumped those of UCAS law. Mm. I, I will say, um, Mary Luce is the vice president, correct? He's the CEO of Evo North America. CEO of Evo North America. So she is the top. Mrs. Luce, I am amenable to, to uh, this arrangement. However, I must say I am perplexed by this decision. I would like nothing more than to simply return to my studies at the university. I understand. However, Evo has other uses for you at this time, Cecile, and I would think that uh, you should welcome the opportunity to prove your usefulness. Mm, of course. To a brighter future. To a brighter future, indeed. Cecile will uh, grab a data chip that I presume she has gotten at some point. Data chips aren't really aren't defined. Um, we'll go ahead and move the copy on her comlink to the data chip. 
and then place it within the safe. Okay. Um, Mary Luce looks at you and says, make no mistake, your assistance in this matter and how well you accomplish it will be noted. This is either the gateway to a brighter future, as you said. Well, hopefully that's the gateway that it's to. Yes, I uh, eagerly anticipate whatever new orders I might receive. Very well, then. I believe that concludes our business for now, and I look forward to uh, discovering that our dear Miss, dear Dean Petrov has actually been uh, an unfaithful employee for other reasons, so that I can uh, end him. That shall not be an issue. It has been a pleasure. Indeed. She nods at you again, and the hologram flickers out of existence. The door Zuko's opens. Head. Yeah, it gets out. <laughs> The door opens basically at that instant and uh, Alice DeVry is standing there and she smiles at you and she says, I'm glad to see that uh, that you understand. I would do anything for Eva. She chuckles. There's no need to take it that far. You don't think so? <laughs> let's not be, uh, let's not be coy. Cecile smiles. I have no idea what you mean. Of course not. If that's all, I shall return to my small apartment. That is all. She shuts the door behind you and gets into the passenger side of the uh, the limousine and it leaves as you are walking away. Phil goes back into her apartment and yet again screams into a pillow. <laughs> so I have a question for you, out of character. Does <laughs> How does Cecile feel about that, what just happened? She's glad that Eva was on her side. She is not happy about being a shadow runner. She she views it as uh, do what the boss wants to keep them happy, so you don't lose your job. And probably the hints, the hints of you are you are a tool in the toolkit Indeed. to be used. Uh, however, and corporations. She she's not giving up. Like with those terms, if they had been better, she might have considered giving it up without reading it. But as it stands, she she is fully anticipating being left to die at some point. Okay, so what's your next move? What's the seal's next move? She's probably going to head to the samovar. Okay, so you grab a get a grid guide and, and head to the samovar. Indeed. Um, Indra, you wake up in the morning. Do you wake up at your usual time, or since you got to bed fairly late, are you guys going to sleep in? That? No, we've lost everyone. I have returned. Let's go. Ahead. Oh, there was a whole lot of things that happened. A lot of double speak. Evil corporations decloaked. I heard uh, the woman who kidnapped Veronica or her boss. I think I don't know. No, her boss basically being like, "Hey, I'm like a feudal lord, and like I need you." Fuck over! What a other lord, cloak and dagger shit. Okay. Yeah, I think that was a pretty good synopsis. And if you fuck them over, be a good little corporate citizen, and you'll get your treat. We will <laughs> reinstate your sin. It's just being able to live. I was gonna cut to uh, Deandra starting the day in the Bellevue Hotel. Boxer and Grace up and on their way, and we've got Cecile on her way. The only people we're still missing are, are Deandra and, and Ice and Rigor Mortis. Deandra probably Ice take off uh, sleep and then took the second watch. So she's she's been awake for a couple hours. It's like a couple cans of soy calf. Yeah, you guys got it was a late night for you. Um, I think by the time you got you got checked in, um, it was. Uh, Probably around midnight. Yep. So, uh, do I get my edge back? Yeah. Yeah. Because I've been out of edge for three sessions, I think. Let's say we get you get your edge back. I think everybody's stun track, if they had any stun damage, has been has been healed at this point. That was probably. I wonder if Ice was carrying any. Rigor Mortis wasn't. Uh, Ice had two buck physical, so I think he still got that at this point. Yeah, Ice has been sleep was sleeping on the sofa, and he gets up and he sorts of stretches, and you see him sort of wince and hold his side, and you see that there's probably looks like there was a bullet impact there in his on his armored jacket. Is that 
Yep. Bad bruise. Yep. Getting old. It's not going away as quickly as it used to. Well, what do you say? I say we head back to the Samovar in the light of day and conclude yep. our business. Sounds good enough. Rigor Mortis says, wait, Samovar? What's that? It's a bar. Oh, okay. What are we doing there? Um, meeting the boss, shall we say. Meeting the boss. I see. And who's the boss in this case? I look at Ice. Ice looks at you like, uh, crap. We don't want to hear this again. Uh, the boss is, um, boss is pro cop skillful. He set this, uh, this run up to break you out. And, uh, you see a look across Rigor Mortis's face like he almost starts into his usual tirade against pro cop and then he just shakes his head and says, yeah, let's get this over with. Sounds good. Helmet on. Get Helmet on. Get in your head. We'll grab you some real clothes on the way there. How's that? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. It's one thing driving around at night in a, in a jumpsuit. It's probably another thing. Actually, the day. I should probably go get them and bring them back here. It'll delay us a bit for a second, but they can wait on us. Ice looks at you and says, uh, uh, why don't you give, uh, give the others a call and see uh, where they're at and make sure nobody else has run into any problems. Okay. So I called the group. I, I, I like a group text chat, I think. So I just sit down on the couch. Like, uh, it's like half in one hand, phone and, uh, comm link in the other, and just like text the group. Uh, uh, status report, um, me and Ice got the shit beat out of us by a go 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 cop. Um, Rigor Mortis is fine, though he has to have a fishbowl on his head. Um, how was your night? The seal doesn't respond. Do, uh, do, do Boxer and Grace even have service where they are? That's a good question. What they? They do. They're not that far away. They're, uh, they're basically at the very tip of, uh, eastern tip of Auburn on the other side in Salish country, basically on the, uh, the eastern side of, uh, Tiger Mountain. Uh, what was the thing she asked? How was your night? I.e. give us a progress report on your stat or a status report. It fine, that tree emoji. I think Deander would like literally type, holy shit, what? The ubiquitous tree emoji. What did you say? Deander would literally type in the, the text chat, holy shit, what does that mean? Clown emoji. I think Deander would then turn off her comm link. They're fine. Alright, um, anything from college girl? Not yet. We'll hear from her soon. Or, Deander wouldn't know that Cecile was separated from the rest of the group. So. How long does it take to get from um, from the cozy cubicle to the Samovar, anyway? Uh, not long. It, they're both in Tacoma, um, so no more than 20, 25 minutes. Okay, so Cecile is there pretty quickly. Yep. Um, I think Deandre would finish her progress support with Getting, uh, getting rigor mortis to change of clothes get Samovar in several hours. Yeah, you've got a good, uh, you've got a good hour's drive down to Tacoma. 40 minutes. Yeah, if you go and you find some clothes at, uh, in Bellevue, well, you're probably going to be spending, you're going to be dropping a couple hundred new yen on that. Sure, why not? All right, uh, so... I hand the second hotel room key to Ice. And then I'll be like, I'll be back in uh, 45 minutes. All right, we'll be here. I'll make sure he doesn't go anywhere. That's good. Rigor mortis snorts at ice. If you guys need anything, let me know while I'm out. We'll do. Also, uh, uh, wait, how are we going to do that? Tells. Um, that is a good question. I see you should get a comm link. Even I have one. All right, well, while you're out getting clothes, why don't you get me a comm link too? Sure, I'll get you a burner. He uh, he hands you a 500 New Yen cred stick. I think Deander just pockets it. Uh, and then Deander just kind of looks uh, rigor mortis up and down, spits out what sizes she assumes uh, rigor mortis is in like question format. Like, am I right? He just drugs. Good enough. Do you have any, do you have any skills, fashion related, clothes related skills? Nope. Okay. Then uh, I guess we'll just go with an edge roll. That sounds like a good idea. She glitches she buys something that like <laughs> seems to be the right size but then inevitably it fucks him over somehow uh zero 
She didn't. She didn't glitch. Good. Sorry. All right. So you go do a little quick bit of shopping around. You pick up a, a cheap burner comlink for ice and and a quick outfit of clothes and and return back to the uh, to the hotel where ice and rigor mortis are basically sitting patiently waiting, watching uh, the news on the trid. Um, there was. I mean, you you catch the end of it. There was apparently. Uh, some kind of uh, terrorist attack in Puyallup. Um, some facility was broken into, and uh, but uh, you know, could have been you, could have been somebody else. The the story's so so all over the place and so vague on details that it's it's hard to tell. I think Deander gets like droplets of the story that are like close enough to what happened that she just walks in and goes, like tosses the comlink to ice and throws clothes at Rigor Mortis and goes, did. College girl, get on the tritio again. Ice looks at you and says, No, uh, that was, I don't think she did. Is that a good thing? Uh, who knows these days? I guess it's probably a good thing. Well, I guess if it's a bad thing, we'll know soon enough. Yep. Uh, Rigor Mortis changes into his clothes, and you guys are ready to go. And then, uh, I think we probably head out just after that. All right. Uh, the... I hand, uh, I guess I hand ice the, uh, I hand Rick and Mortis the other room key, and I'm like, this place is paid off for a week if you need to crash here for the rest of the week, unless, uh, our cop's giving you a place to stay. Yeah, I guess we're gonna have to wait and see how this all pans out, but, uh, I do appreciate it, Deandre. I owe you. Definitely. And he smacks ice in the ribs where he had the bruise and says, unlike this guy, he owes me. Ice winces and gets on the motorcycle. Rigor Mortis gets in the sidecar, and the uh, the trip to uh, to Tacoma is uneventful. Um, and uh, so I guess we'll break to to Boxer and Grace. Um, if you guys are online, are you guys doing anything interesting or special before you head out, or are you going to head out? You just got the you just got the text from Deandra asking you how your night was, All and that. mentioning that they'd been beat up a little bit. Uh, text back. Need help? Question mark. No. Period. A C K. Period. A C K. Acknowledged. Ack. Nightingale would have asked that question in character <laughs> as soon as she saw it come up on her comm link. Acknowledged. It's short hand. Oh. Okay. It's like an emoji, but in words. Why not just say okay? Have it. <laughs> okay. Um. I suppose there are a number of things that we could do, but I'm not quite sure what we would be doing. Um, before we leave camp, you, you asked? Well, obviously we're going to read up on this whole communism thing before we leave. Oh god. Um, Okay, that's that's more than we're gonna role play right now. Yeah, <laughs> that can be for the supplemental part we did tonight. While Boxer is is cooking and serving breakfast, she notices that Pony is deep deep in her calm link steadying something. Then you guys get the after basically after breakfast and after steadying, you you get that whole text message back and forth. Uh, no response from Cecile, um, and. Ginger, did you say that you did you let them know that you were headed to Samovar? Yeah, I said like we'll be at Samovar in several hours. Okay, so you get a, a message saying that they'll be at Samovar in a couple of hours, and you, this is basically this is basically the payday. the 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 mission was rescue Rigor Mortis, uh, and Prokop was acting as the Johnson in this case, and he so. Taking rigor mortis back there—that's your payday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I assume after after you guys are done with breakfast, are you headed back into Seattle? Yes. Okay. Unless unless Grace wants to shoot gun. Uh, Grace doesn't need to shoot gun. Grace is Grace is content without shooting gun. You saw orange frog. The frog. I mean, would there be any benefit to shooting the pew pew? I don't think um, so. Could attract unwanted attention. Yeah, let's not do that. You are, fair, you are 
quite close to the to the, to the border. So, um, and you are, you know, in fairly wild and remote country. So, there's also the chance of paracritters hanging around. Oh yeah, we're not gonna do that. The Topps Company, Inc. has sole ownership of the names, logo, artwork, marks, photographs, sounds, audio, video, and or any proprietary material used in connection with the game Shadowrun. The Topps Company, Inc. has granted permission to the Hard Knock Sorority Podcast to use such names, logos, artwork, marks, and or any proprietary materials for promotional and informational purposes on its website, but does not endorse and is not affiliated with the Hard Knock Sorority Podcast in any official capacity whatsoever. The music for the Hard Knock Sorority Podcast was written and performed by Trace Mineral. The Hard Knock Sorority Podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons License 4.0, meaning you are welcome to use the material as long as you give us credit.